Hello, my name is Dr. Matt Cap, and in this video, we're going to look at developing accessible ways for students to demonstrate the achievement standards in the Australian curriculum. All right, so let's have a look at this achievement standard statement from year six, geography in the Australian curriculum has. So students identify and compare different responses to a geographical question. So the first thing we need to do to make these achievement standards accessible is to identify the cognitive verbs in the achievement standard statement. They are identify and compare. We then need to collaboratively define those by going to the glossary in, in the Australian curriculum from ACARA and identifying or determining what we are requiring students to demonstrate. So using the glossary from HPE, because I find that sometimes the cognitive verbs are more easily found in the HPE glossary, Identify means to recognize or name someone or something. So students need to name different responses to a geographical challenge. When we look at the word compare in the ACARA glossary, compare means to observe or note how things are similar or different. So students need to name and note if they're similar or different, different responses to a geographical challenge. If we read through that achievement standard, what is the one thing that stands out to me that students don't need to do. They don't need to develop a text. They don't need to develop a informative paragraph or a persuasive paragraph or an essay within text referencing and reference list. What they fundamentally need to do is to name different responses people might have to a geographical issue. So how can students demonstrate this? If they don't have to develop a text, what can they do? So identify means to recognize or name someone or something. A simple way students could demonstrate this, which will provide them a skill for lifelong learning is developing mind maps. The cognitive skill of compare could be demonstrated through a Venn diagram where students identify the similarities and differences between different responses to a geographical issue. Now that we've defined the cognitive verbs in the achievement standard, we need to identify any key terminology. This is what goes into the mind map and Venn diagram. So if we reread through the achievement standard, students identify and compare different responses to a geographical issue. It's telling us that we need to define what different responses means and a geographical challenge. So different responses means that the students can't be at standard if they just look at one side of an argument. They have to provide different responses to a geographical issue, the positives and negatives, for example. You can't just look at one side. Also to be at standard, it doesn't say multiple geographical challenges, it says a geographical challenge. It's really important when we look at the achievement standards to look at those clarifiers. Students only need to demonstrate in relation to one geographical challenge to be at standard. And interestingly enough, when you go through the content descriptors and elaborations of the Australian curriculum geography in year six, it doesn't define what those geographical challenges could be. So it could be climate change, it could be drought, overpopulation, flooding, or something of interest to your students. So now that we've broken down that achievement standard, what is it fundamentally kids need to do? They need to choose one geographical issue, not multiple, just one. They need to develop a mind map of possible responses to that geographical issue. Then they need to move their possible responses in the mind map over to a Venn diagram, highlighting the similarities and differences. If they can do that, they're at standard. So what does this look like in terms of a teaching and learning sequence? Because that's the ne next thing I need to develop. How do I get kids to that process? So fundamentally, when I'm teaching, I'm always contextualizing for the learners the geographical challenge. So it might be drought or flooding or overpopulation or climate change. But whether it's me individually modeling, talking about my cognitive thoughts or the students working in groups or students working independently. They're developing a mind map, identifying possible responses 
to that geographical challenge, ensuring that they look at the diverse range of perspectives. Then they take that information from the mind map and put it in a Venn diagram with the similarities and differences. If they can do that, they're at standard. What, how do I collect evidence of learning then? If I look at this teaching sequence, when students are working in groups or students are working individually, what they develop and produce is evidence of learning against that achievement standard to say a student is that standard. Doesn't say in the Australian curriculum that the students can't do the work collaboratively or independently to provide evidence of learning. Watching this video, you need to ask yourself, am I overcomplicating things? A simple way to overcomplicate this is to add the way that the achievement standard is demonstrated if it's not explicitly named in the achievement standard. A simple way to reduce the chance of overcomplicating is to work collaboratively, define the cognitive verbs and define the important terminology in the achievement standard. Thank you for watching this video.